o'clock right now, 7 a.m. and it's 15, 15 degrees or 58 Fahrenheit inside and it's minus 2 or like my, or about 28 or something like that at Fahrenheit outside and I hadn't put a log on since what's uh, 9, 8 o'clock last night so this has been burned out for quite a while so I'm really happy with two things first of all this is the first heating season that I've had the walls chinked all the joints uh, filled in and first time with the stove all uh, properly maintained all the gaskets changed and that stone wall so that stone wall does have a little bit of heat in it right now still so I'm really happy with this this is going to save me a ton of firewood this year thing really took a beating in the last cabin I'm having a hard time getting it perfectly sharp the way I can tell whether it's sharp or not with a nice bright light like that shining directly down on the edge if there's any reflection at all back to me from that edge then I know it's not sharp it's not down to a fine edge because if there's a fine edge the light just bounces past it and nothing reflects back to you so it's just a really really fine edge on the steel but no, it's definitely got some flat spots in it still, so I'm going to have to work at this stone for, for a little while and then work down in increments to finer stones, but I'm surprised how much I need to go on the rough stone with this very, very hard steel. The way you know also that it's sharp with a woodworking tool, especially like this, every little scratch in the metal surface is something that catches on the wood. So if you were to look at that edge, even though it looks really sharp, if you were to look at that on a, under a microscope, you'd see all kinds of little abrasions and breaks in the metal, which means it's not quite as sharp. So the more abrasions you can get rid of, the better. And I'm getting to that point where it's starting to get really polished. Steel's getting really polished here. That's what you want, as smooth a surface as possible. Um, so half an hour in here is going to save me probably hours of frustration today and beyond if I didn't have this thing razor sharp problem is I just missed an opportunity because a small flock of geese literally just flew over the cabin by the time I got to the door grabbed the shotgun they were passed so could have had tonight's dinner if I was outside working right now which is why I do have a, a shotgun um, outside with me when I'm working at this time of year during hunting season it's the uh, last day of moose season today, which I don't expect to do anything about because it's too hard to get tags here. But it is small game season still, and deer season for bows is open, so I've got my bow here above me, and I practice that every day. And if I see an opportunity or know that there's some deer coming around regularly, then I'll go out, but otherwise I'll wait till first week of November to go out and then spend the hunting up until the uh, first week of December. I'll keep hunting for deer with a bow. So in the meantime, I'm just trying to beat the snow here and get this sauna done. Or at least get the sauna up to a point where I'm high enough above the snow that I can continue to work on it without being buried in snow or losing material. So this is getting pretty close. A couple more strops. Strokes on the strop. Another strop to polish it up, and then I'm going to get outside and get working. Log's actually frozen. 
not quite used to the cold yet. It's uh, minus two out here Celsius. So hopefully I get a little bit warmer temperatures this week. I still need to collect all the moss for the roof from down in the creek valley. So hopefully it does warm it up, up enough during the day to thaw that out so I can collect it. Drop it. We need to find you something else to play with. Okay.
tired. Such a long, another long boring process uh, charring the bottom logs here. So I'm doing two half logs on the south and the north sides, then the three logs that run south and north. So east wall, west wall, and then the center wall. So that's five logs like this that I have to char. <clears throat> I'm doing that because, first of all, it's a sauna, so it's going to be damp, and also because I have it sitting right on essentially ground, but on quite a bit of gravel to, to keep the water uh, flowing away from it. So I don't, I don't think they're gonna rot on the cabin. I pine tarred, I made the pine tar, first of all, right in the ground here. And um, then I put eight, six by six, yeah, six by six hemlocks on the, on the ground that I, that I pine tarred. Then I put a little bit of roofing membrane underneath those. And then I built the cabin on top of that. Now, eventually those hemlocks will rot. But I'm not worried about it because I can just put rocks under there or may even build a little rock foundation kind of thing. I mentioned in an earlier video here in this series about um, why I didn't put pillars in or columns or a full foundation, mainly because of the frost level here. I was reading a, a question somebody had and I thought it was a pretty good question asking what I would add basically whether I would add four wheelers and and uh, snowmobiles and stuff like that maybe even a power boat and uh, other conveniences I guess and I do put a lot of thought into that in fact my wife was saying you know why don't I get an ATV again so that I can bring the logs up and fetch firewood go back into the forestry roads back behind here and and just explore more and I am considering it I have to decide what to do about that whether I want to add those kind of things so the problem is here's what happened years ago I had a four-wheeler had a boat had a couple of boats power boats I had um, had one snowmobile in the past but what I found is that they kind of um, diminish my self-reliance instead of adding to it meaning that I had to maintain those things I had to pay for them initially which means I needed to finance them with my time in order to work enough hours to be able to afford to buy those things and then I found that just the maintenance and the worry and the inputs and everything to run those things were not necessary at that stage in my life as I was trying to diminish or simplify my lifestyle and cut expenses that was the main thing so now that I'm back in a position where I can afford those things, the question is, do I add them? So an ATV, for example, would cost about $8,000 to get the one that I think would be uh, good enough for me. And, you know, probably new or fairly new, so they don't have a lot of maintenance costs and time. Then I would probably insure it. Well, I would have to insure it if I was to go out on any of the roads and um, put gas in it and oil and, and maintenance and all that kind of stuff. So the costs would end up adding up over time of course and I'd have to decide, I have to decide whether I think that's worthwhile or not. I think maybe it is. I think having first of all another form of even recreation but more importantly something to speed up the acquisition of firewood um, to get back in those forestry roads to hunt I think would be a major consideration. I've mentioned several times that it's hard to live in one place off the land because just the resources aren't typically in one spot. Now that this cabin's here, the moose don't come through here very often. I get um, the odd bear, but I haven't seen one in over a month here. Uh, deer hit and miss. Probably be able to get a deer off the property this year still. Small game, there's a few grouse around, but I'm hesitant to shoot them here on the property because I like having them here first of all, and second of all, it's kind of a backup food source, so I can leave those till later. There's hardly any rabbits. Rabbits, I think, are down probably this year in their cycle in this area. But it's not, you know, it's not like that the kind of landscape or topography that they like anyway. So I don't think I'll ever have many here. I see the odd track in the winter. but So that's, um, that's the decision. Uh, snowmobile would be the same thing. It allowed me to get firewood maybe even better than four-wheeler. Because then I can access way, much, way more of the land around here. 
especially because there's like a hundred miles of crown land behind me that I could access with the uh, snowmobile all winter long if I can get the proper one that can go off trail. Um, I can get into the back lakes for fishing, a lot uh, better fishing, and um, and just recreation, I guess, exploring. So something I'm considering. I don't, I'm not basing my decision on what you guys think, but it's wondering what you do think about that, whether it's something you would do if you were living this lifestyle or not, and whether you think that's a good use of my time and and, uh, and money. Okay. At least she's a pretty good idea of what I'm doing, but she still looks at me sometimes like I'm crazy, just talking away. I'm not sure if she thinks I'm talking to her right now or, or to you guys, but anyway, better roll these logs over.